Uh, just a quick comment about uh, John Cleese. Um, and what he got up to when it came to that war episode of Faulty Towers, what he got up to, even before the Black Lives Matter thing came up, and banned that episode of Faulty Towers in its current form and in its past forms too. Well, John Cleese had already, you know, prior to all of that, agreed that the N-word should be taken out of that episode, edited out, uh, even though, even though originally, incorrectly, but he obviously didn't know, because he's apparently a pretty good guy. Um, he didn't know back in the 1970s that that was causing such offence that it, you couldn't put it into the mouth of a fool and, um, and have that fool utter the word in order to uh, laugh at people who use that word. Did you keep up with all of that? <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Anyway, look, that, that was the whole premise of the, the major in Faulty Towers was to allow us to laugh at racists, for example, you know, old, fossil, um, stupid racists. You know, that was the idea of that um, war, you know, that the major's role in that war episode, you know, because he also suggested that, you know, that if you see a German in, in, the, in, in the modern age, um, you should shoot at the German because German are vermin, you know. Um, all right. That's comedy. That's the way comedy works, you know. The, the, the war episode of Faulty Towers is not suggesting that you go and shoot Germans. If Germans were watching, they should laugh. Well, they can't. Your Germans don't laugh, do they? Yeah, I'm sure they do. Um, and um, the Faulty Towers uh, war episode... Um, you know, if if I was, um, and I'm not, but if I was um, African English, and I was watching that with the N word taken out, um, I think I would find it funny. You know, I would laugh too that this stupid old white man was saying racist things. I'd say, yep, that's typical. Yeah, so I think I'd laugh. So I don't think it was inappropriate. And in the same way, I don't think my previous episode was inappropriate for the same sorts of reasons. But I could be wrong, you know. And when John Cleese found out he was wrong, he um, he did something about it and agreed with the, with the uh, BBC that the N word should be taken out of that episode. You know, once community values became such that that word became totally uh, true, is that a word? Um, wrong, you know. Um, back in the nineteen seventies, he obviously didn't twig that it was wrong. I went for a very long time not realising that what they call blackface now, a term I didn't even know, uh, and I must have been about 40 or something before I realised, that blackface was actually an insult, you know, because I come from Australia, and, um, and I didn't know. <laughs> um, and I should have checked, you know, when I was 20, but I didn't have an internet and I didn't know anyone from America. What should I do? Strike up pen pal friends and start writing letters to people and saying um oh dear american <laughs> you know wait six weeks for the reply dear american um can you enclosed is a dictionary um an australian dictionary uh can you please um alert me to anything in there that i shouldn't be saying because i don't know, actually know which bits I should be checking to make sure that they're wrong, you know, and then he would grab that dictionary and blackface wouldn't even be in there and I wouldn't even find out anyway. See, it's really tricky, you know, you, nobody knows what it was like without an internet. You could go to the library, but where would you find it there? And as a kid, wouldn't you be looking for Beagle's books rather than thumbing through an encyclopedia looking for whether blackface is a wrong word to use when you don't even know the word blackface, so how would you look it up anyway? I, don't, I doubt that it was even in the dictionary, was it? Back in the 1970s? Wouldn't have a clue. Didn't think to look it up. I was looking up swear words, <laughs> as I should. All right, so that's that. Um, but, you know, John Cleese, to his credit, I think, um, did um, al allow... I should really iron this. Um, all right, I'm 
I shouldn't be living in a, in a shed, no. <laughs> did um, allow for the N-word to be taken out of his episode um, of uh, Faulty Towers, the war episode. And, um, you know, I think that's to his credit. Um, I mean, he probably, th he, he probably thought, and I have no idea what he thinks, you know, but he probably thought, well, it actually works if it's in there. Yeah, but yeah, all right, I get it. You know, just the utterance of the word is a real insult, especially these days. It probably was back then. He said to himself, "All right, so I know that now." But you know, I am getting, I'm getting an idiot to utter the words. So it's kind of the opposite of what you're saying. You know, I'm getting an idiot. Yeah, you know, I'm getting a racist idiot to utter the words, which turns it all on its head, doesn't it? And it, it makes the utterance of the word um, a a force for positive change, I would have thought. Yeah, you know, might have thought. Um, Basil Faulty. But be that as it may, I'm sure he thought. Um, yeah, all right. It's a real lightning rod, that word, in the 21st century at least. It may have been even when I was younger and I didn't even know. Take it out. Yeah, you know, and then Black Lives came. Black Lives Matter came along and had the whole episode banned, even in its current form, with the N-word taken out. Um, and to that he said, oh, get, oh, come on, what? The rest of it is funny. Yeah. And, and if you're watching this or my previous episode, you say, no, nothing, you know, nothing about it, any of it is funny. <laughs> Never make comedy out of anything that's not a laughing matter. Well, there goes all comedy, except for dumb comedy. And there's your problem. There's your problem. Do, is, is comedy... Um, is comedy one of the ways? Yeah, you know, along with its, its cousin, satire, and everything else, is comedy one way that we can work our way through these difficult things or not? And if it's not, well, I guess that's Twitter, isn't it? Um, there is a, co a type of comedy on... I've never been on Twitter. Never even, never even had an account. Um, but apparently there is... People do have laughs on Twitter, but... They're gags more than comedy, as far as I understand. And this goes for Facebook and um, Instagram too. I don't know. I'm not on any of those. But um, I have seen Facebook, you know, years ago. I hopped on Facebook to have a look what all the fuss was about. Then hopped off. <laughs> never went back. Um, but I've never been on anything else. What is the style of comedy on social media? I don't think it's comedy as such as quick gags. Now, in the same way that social media, I think... Um, discourages uh, good debate, proper dialectic and all those sorts of things, I think it would discourage, just in its format, um, uh, sophisticated comedy. You know, it's got to be a quick gag, doesn't it? In the American style. Um, and Americans invented social media, so I wouldn't be surprised. And then also, I think they want lots and lots of clicks. And, you know... Um, well, I suppose Faulty Towers is probably on social media because you can link to it, but you know what I'm getting at. I think, um, I don't think the, the quick gag is the thing, isn't it, on social media? You know, a cat falling off a bench, you know, because that's funny. Because cats don't normally uh, fall off benches, you know, and cats, uh, we know them to be so very coordinated that it's just funny when a cat tries to jump onto a bench and misses. <laughs> you know, it's hilarious. It's not funny if a dog does that, so that sort of thing. Um, but I think as I reflect upon my previous episode, well, I didn't use the N-word, did I? So, And I think the rest of my previous episode surely was comedy. Now, it did deal with dark subjects, um, you know, La Mamba, and uh, probably, uh, and definitely, lots of other AFL players have suffered uh, very bad... Uh, a systemic racism, you know, even above just straight racism, systemic racism is a tough one. Um, it's just built into the entire fabric of a community. You know, it's like it's like the problem that England's got being systemically England. You know, and the problem Ethiopia's got being systemically Ethiopian, and the problem Mars has got being systemically Martian. It's a very hard thing to um, evolve past, you know, because um, it's like um, 
you know, the Latin languages being systemically, um, um, what do they call it, un, um, agendered, gendered, you know, every word has got a l or a la on it in French, you know, and similarly in the, in um, Italian and all that sort of stuff, that's systemic genderism, most definitely, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, but how do you root that out of, of the Latin languages, out of French and Italian? You have to start again. You have to throw away the entire language and start again. Systemic. Anything is um, really deeply um, interwoven with the thing. Um, very hard to root it out. And, um, you know, Collingwood Football Club found that out. You know, they've got systemic racism. They've had systemic racism all along. Looks as every footy club, I'm sure, in Australia. But it's Collingwood in the gun at the moment. Collingwood had, a, you know, a detail, an inquiry where um, people were sent in there, independent people were sent in there to find out whether there was systemic racism in there. And of course there was. No football club in Australia would have survived that inquiry. They really should, in fairness, um, make that inquiry extend its terms of references and maybe they will do that to all football clubs and all sporting clubs in Australia and all businesses and government itself and you know and you know in the same way that Collingwood's being brought to its knees right now over this the whole of Australia should be brought to its knees and the Prime Minister sacked and everybody under him who is in any position of power you know I'm not being facetious here Theoretically, that's what should happen, but for some reason, I can't remember what it was. I think it was a few gaffes and everything like that Collingwood had. Well, no, there were some good reasons, I'm sure, but Essendon's lucky. We're lucky we didn't have that inquiry pulled on us. But we had another inquiry, another inquiry pulled on us around the supplement scandal, and we weren't the only ones doing that, and we didn't survive that, and we got smashed in the same way that Collingwood was getting smashed over racism. We got smashed over the supplements. And um, it's no way Gold Coast or Geelong, you know, and other teams, you know, where, um, was it Melbourne as well? Where um, the people who were doing the supplements at Essendon had been, there's no way they would have survived such an inquiry, but Essendon went down on that occasion. It's a question of where you have your inquiry. But getting back to John Cleese, you know, to his credit, yeah, he was um, sensitive to the fact that the N-word is just a very bad thing to have in the 21st century. And I would not defend the use of the N-word in comedy. Believe it or not. So what else would I not defend about my previous episode then? The episode previous to this one. Well, um, according to my sensibility, it was all right. You know, but you may watch it and say, it's not all right. In which case, give me a ring. And I'll slice out whatever you think's not right. But, you know, um, to the best of my ability in that previous episode, um, I uh, created comedy. Now, I could have been safe and and made sure I said nothing that is even possibly a little bit dangerous, but then you would never make comedy at all. You'd make cheap cat gags on Facebook. That's all you'd do. And that's what a lot of people do, but I get bored with that. So bored that I don't even bother going on Facebook or Instagram or the other one, Twitter, TikTok.